much, uh, Dr. Mesenger. Thank you uh, uh, for inviting me to uh, speak at this side event. Well, this uh, UN Human Rights Council uh, resolution uh, is not the first of its kind. Uh, we've had this uh, uh, promoting accountability and uh, reconciliation in Sri Lanka uh, from 2012 onwards. Uh, 2012, 13, uh, in 14, when uh, the Office of the High Commissioner for Human Rights was mandated to conduct uh, an independent uh, investigation, uh, which uh, was done, uh, an investigation called OISL, that was published uh, in September uh, 2016, uh, sorry, September 2015, at which point uh, uh, another resolution was passed uh, called HRC 30 stroke one with the uh, uh, concurrence of the country concerned. And that was followed up by uh, two further resolutions, 34 uh, stroke one and uh, 40 uh, stroke one. Uh, and the period uh, uh, of uh, uh, supervision or uh, engagement given to the OHCHR by the last resolution now comes to an end. And it is at this point that the core group has uh, put forward uh, a resolution uh, at this 46th session, uh, HRC 46 uh, stroke one. Now, the reason why we need uh, such a resolution in the Human Rights Council, uh, I think has been amply uh, demonstrated by the Sri Lankan state itself. Uh, you can see the uh, way the government is frantically uh, uh, running uh, here and there, uh, and uh, not just merely canvassing votes uh, of the member uh, states to defeat uh, this resolution, but also to appease. Uh, and uh, the decision they made uh, after the sessions commenced uh, to permit uh, uh, burial uh, of those who die of COVID-19 is the best example of that. And I think is the a, is a best argument as to why we require a resolution. It is only when such uh, look into by the international community um, is there that the government actually responds. Now we know this uh, uh, only too well uh, because uh, from 2012 onwards, uh, the Tamil community uh, has been pushing the government uh, as the resolutions in 2012 and 13 said, just to implement their own commission, the Lessons Learned and Reconciliation Commission recommendations. That's all. They themselves had a commission which made certain recommendations, but they wouldn't implement them. And these resolutions also urged them to implement their own uh, uh, recommendations. And it is because of this uh, look into uh, by a, a unilat uh, 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 body, uh, international body, that there was some measure uh, of space created uh, for uh, the numerically uh, minority uh, in, in Sri Lanka. Uh, and after uh, consensus resolutions were passed, uh, yes, the progress was uh, painfully slow, but nevertheless, uh, the government responded in some ways in establishing uh, certain mechanisms. Uh, of course, uh, on the side of accountability, uh, little or nothing was done, uh, um, but there were improvements. And uh, I would think that the, uh, the best use of these resolutions has been to avert further oppression uh, by the government against uh, those who are numerically in the minority. And uh, now uh, we have a situation that the uh, uh, government that is in office uh, is uh, uh, intent on uh, satisfying or uh, making happy uh, the majority uh, Sinhala Buddhist community of the country. Uh, also, they think. They think if uh, they are hard on the 
numerical minorities uh, that will win them favor uh, with the numeric majority. And so, uh, uh, without rhyme or reason, uh, they come down hard on the numeric minorities, the Tamils uh, and the Muslims, uh, for sure, uh, suffer as a result. Uh, and uh, those in office uh, gloat uh, that they have put these people in their place and they no longer need uh, uh, the numeric minorities uh, to govern the country, uh, that they themselves can do it. Uh, and they are a preponderant majority between 70 to 74%. And that that is more than sufficient uh, to do whatever they like and that the others have to live uh, according to uh, their terms. So this is the situation in the country. Uh, the issues are too numerous to discuss uh, at this side event. Perhaps others might mention some. Uh, but overall, I think uh, uh, what can be said is that the member countries should uh, uh, take into account uh, the behavior of the Sri Lankan state over the years and particularly the one, the government that is uh, now in office, uh, the trajectory that uh, they are following uh, and uh, ensure uh, that uh, the, Sri, the matter of Sri Lanka uh, remains uh, on at least uh, one multilateral uh, international forum. Uh, that is one way of ensuring uh, the, the prevention of further erosion uh, of democratic space, of violence against minorities uh, and oppression. Uh, and so this is a, a crucial time uh, when the government is uh, uh, doing bits and pieces uh, to try and satisfy member countries' concerns, the Muslim countries' concerns. They are very, very uh, conscious of, and so they say they have uh, now uh, lifted the ban on uh, mandatory uh, cremation, but they are putting the Muslim community through uh, real difficulty. Uh, anybody who dies on the Western coast or anywhere else in the country have to, there's just one plot and everyone has to uh, transport uh, the bodies uh, to that area. They have to bear the transport costs. So it's being made almost impossible. And likewise, uh, India's concerns uh, they think they can address by saying we will hold the provincial council election soon and so on. So platitudes uh, abound, but there is no real uh, intent, uh, no political intent uh, to do the right thing, uh, to uh, uh, do justice uh, by all the people in Sri Lanka. So this is a crucial moment uh, when countries must support the resolution that has been put forward by the uh, core group and pass it uh, so that the international community's concerns are uh, well and truly expressed through this process. Thank you very much again for this opportunity. Thank you, Prabhupada.